Good evening, good morning, good day, uh, <clears throat> whenever you might be watching this. For me, it's evening. As you can see, um, and um, snuggled in, getting ready uh, for a, a long winter's nap. But um, I wanted to ramble on a bit more about uh, Russia, Russia, Russia. The, I want to continue to pour out the contents of the of the can that I opened uh, a few videos ago and um, it it concerns in a, in a rather open-ended way because again this is not me systematically talking about anything um, although these ideas that I'm entertaining are interesting enough that I might eventually write something about them and when I write something it is more systematic and it is more uh <clears throat> you know that that's where i think my true talent lies uh, in case you were wondering if in case you thought i was I, I i i thought of myself as a great speaker uh i do not i do not labor under that misapprehension but um just continuing what i what i was talking about in the last couple of videos on the subject of russia um you know, it's really strange that Russia ever became this uh, this world uh, <clears throat> shaping phenomenon. That it became this nation that was that that was so important, that got to be so important to so many people, and it continues to be so. You know, whatever, however people's whatever people's perspective are on is, I should say, on Russia. Um, it continues to be, uh, to, 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 you know, to use that phrase that's been used way too often, it lives rent free in many people's, many, in many a mine these days that they, uh, there's, a there's many, a, a fanatic <clears throat> renting his clothes and, and uh, screaming about Russia these days. Um, and there, there, there was no reason to think that it would develop, that things would develop this way. Um, you know, as far as Russia becoming the standard bearer of communism, uh, which it was for most of the 20th century, uh, you know, to, to the detriment, to the great detriment of most of its citizens, of course, and to, to, uh, uh, the misfortune of much of the world, um, it, uh, was not supposed to happen that way. Uh, the, the theorists of dialectical materialism, um, Karl Marx and, uh, and his cronies, uh, they thought that, <clears throat> that, um, the communist revolution would take place in industrialized, countries that it had to take place it could only take place in in countries that were industrialized it, it, because uh you know nations to marx had to first make the step to bourgeois capitalism um before they could make the step to uh to socialism and then to communism and uh <clears throat> you know in western europe especially and in north america you know, you had uh, an industrialized world, um, but uh, but not in not in Russia in the nineteenth century, <clears throat> or even not in, the, in into the twentieth century. It it remained quote unquote behind uh, in the sense of uh, being um, uh, a serf state, agricultural. Uh, uh, you know, ruled by a czar, uh, you know, deeply reactionary. And I don't say reactionary in a bad sense. I, I just, in a, just in a descriptive sense that, uh, you know, the, uh, um, a, a theocracy, uh, you know, powerful church, church and state connected, uh, <clears throat> all those things. So the idea that, that, uh, it would happen in Russia, first was something that never was supposed to happen and that was that's part of part of what made 
the uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary's declarations in at Fatima so prescient. Um, she was the first to talk about, you know, Russia. We've got to pray that Russia be consecrated to my sacred heart, she said, or else her, she will spread her errors across the world. What were those errors in uh, early or mid-1917 when, the, when these uh, visitations were happening? Uh, no, no, uh, no one knew what these errors could be. But, uh, you know, because nobody foresaw Russia going Bolshevik communist, but, but in, in October, October of 1917, after the, uh, um, after the Marian apparitions had ceased at Fatima, after the miracle of the sun, <clears throat> you know, put, put a punctuation mark on, on those, uh, uh, those visions that, that uh, those visitations that went on uh, month after month to uh, those three guileless peasant children um, in in the small village of Fatima, uh, Portugal, which seemed to be seems to be you know far away from the center of you know political uh, uh, importance, you know these visit. These visitations didn't happen. They, they, they didn't appear to any bishops. They didn't appear to the Pope in Rome. Uh, they didn't appear to any kings or, or uh, any, you know, presidents or prime ministers. It was, it was these three kids, these three little kids uh, in uh, who were illiterate, you know, in, in this village that was far, far away. It seemed far, far away from anything. Uh, far, far away from the action, so to speak. But, um, but there you had it. Um, and, and the Blessed Virgin Mary called it. She said, uh, unless the church prays, uh, the hierarchy of the church prays, because the hierarchy of the church is, is still, you know, the hierarchy of the church, but, uh, you know, so they still have, have the power invested in them as, uh, you know, uh, the, in the lines of succession, that is, that is the apostolic succession. Um, <clears throat> if they, if all they had to do was pray formally together as a group, pray that Russia be consecrated to the sacred heart of Mary, but they didn't do that. And because they didn't do that, Number one, Russia went communist and spread her began to spread her errors across the world. Uh, and then number two, there was another terrible world war, which which broke out a few years later, uh, which was presaged by a sign in the sky, as I've talked about before. But anyway, um, What I just wanted to stay stay with, what I want to dwell on, what I what I find so interesting, and, and what I really just can't let go about uh, all of this, all, this this whole you know these these various threads all of uh, of history and theology and and uh, and so forth, all of which re relate to Russia, uh, is again just how Russia became this, uh, this extremely important, uh, nation, this all important nation, all eyes were on Russia. And yet this was, this was a country that was just, a, I mean, it was, it was, uh, geographically impressive in that it was huge. Uh, it was a large landmass. But, of course, m much of that large landmass was, you know, bitterly cold, barely, barely inhabitable, you know, the, the Siberia um, region. Um, so, but in the 20th century, Russia became this cause celeb, and uh, it became near uh, a country that was near and dear to the hearts <coughs> of uh, of of leftists, uh, you know, in the early part of the 20th century, 
who were, you know, leftists in the West, uh, who <clears throat> saw in Russia this this great hope for uh, the redemption of the world, the secular redemption of the world, because they were they were communists. They didn't believe in the, in anything transcendent, um, but they they. Uh, uh, they were willing to sacrifice their lives, their reputations. <clears throat> you know, they would, they would, uh, uh, they they turned against their own, uh, their own countries. They they turned against their own people. Uh, you know, you had all of these uh, uh, again people who who. Uh, who you, important you know people in in literature and in uh, in the arts and uh, and other places as well just about everywhere um, who were so fanatically with Russia uh, that they were willing to infiltrate their own nation their own government you know the Red Scare was not a reaction to nothing it was it was a reaction to a movement that was genuinely afoot um it was it was uh you know uh, read whitaker chambers witness you know it's it, it's it was very very credible uh so anyway for a while for decades you know even into the 70s and 80s you know, when I when I came onto the world stage myself, uh, Russia was this uh, this very feared uh, entity, and you know, with 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 some good reason. They, it was a totalitarian state. Uh, you know, uh, communism was no picnic to live under. Stalin was a monster, uh, and you know, the other Russian premiers were were not. Uh, uh, we're not uh, wonderful guys either. Um, but, but anyway, it was the system that put Russia front and center in the minds of so many people uh, in the West, both those who were fanatically uh, uh, behind it, you know, had this kind of uh, religious fervor uh, their their fervor for uh, <clears throat> achieving this, you know, helping the world to reach this es eschatological state of uh, utopia, Uto that this this uh, you know heaven on earth that was supposed to happen after communists took over and uh, and the state withered away, and uh, you know the workers' paradise was instituted. This was, it was a, an absurd dream, uh, but it was one that that was sincerely believed in by many. Um, and then, of course, nineteen eighty nine, uh, Soviet Union fell. Uh, communism ceased to be the uh, the predominant ideology. Um, and Russia, was, Russia, and much of the East was thrown into chaos for for a time. But presently, presently, it came back. You know, after after a few very lean years, very difficult years uh, of just being a, a a puppet state, just being ruled by, you know, just 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 being this abject. Uh, the state of abject humiliation, uh, where it, it was it was ruled and controlled by outside interests uh, who, who didn't really care about the the uh, the Russian people. Um, eventually, Russia found its feet again and uh, became a power again, became a force to be reckoned with again in the world, and this time. As many have noted, it, it when Russia uh, was resurrected, when it uh, when it rose from the ashes of uh, its uh, 
it's, it's death under communism. It came back as uh, this uh, this society that was building itself up uh, in some ways uh, a return to the forces that predominated in the 19th century, although uh, there were no there was no uh, czar anymore. The um, the royal family was was uh, viciously uh, massacred by the Bolsheviks in 1917 or or sometime around then, uh, including the children. You know, it was just this awful, awful thing. So the so royal the royal uh, lineage was gone, but but you still had vestiges of the old mentality that maybe in some ways never left. In some ways they survived, you know, through, through the communist years. Uh, um, and they're back. They're back on the world stage. And they're back to being feared and reviled by so many in the West who just seem to not be able to stop thinking about Russia, thinking that Russia, Russian machinations are behind everything, that Russian machinations, you know, uh, rigged the, the U.S. election in 2016, <laughs> that Russian machinations um, uh, are behind the, <clears throat> the great chaos uh, and division, uh, and, uh, the, the growing polarization of the West, particularly of the United States. Well, no, they, they're not. The, the, that polarization exists all by itself. It, it came about, uh, through a series of, you know, events, uh, uh, uh but, what we have now in the in the in the West is not communism, per se, not communism uh, of the Soviet variety at all, and that distinction really should be drawn um, when people say it. You know, co it's the communists when people talk about uh, the, the the you know the the leftists in the media and academia and so forth. When when they're called communists, really, that's that's not accurate. Um, it has been called cultural Marxism, and I think there's there's something useful to that term. Um, Marxism is, is in some ways more poisonous than, uh, than economic Marxism. Um, you know, under communism in Russia, the, the family continued, the traditional family, lots of traditions endured, uh, masculinity was, you know, was uh, not attacked and and uh, reviled. Uh, femininity was not attacked and reviled. There was not this effort to make uh, uh, everybody into uh, hideous, unnatural golems. Uh, you know, to 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 re to wrench them out of their biology. Uh, that, you know, I, I mean, that, that just wasn't really so much the, that, that wasn't the focus of Soviet communism at all. And the whole, whole notion of multiculturalism, of, of which, which really means, you know, uh, hating, hating on uh, the white man. Um, there was no effort in the Soviet bloc to to, to force mass uh, uh, immigration. Um, you know, the Soviets did make allies with, with third world uh, countries um, and, uh, you know, with f people, forces like the PLO in, in the Middle East or, or the ANC in South Africa and, and, and others. Uh, but there was no, like, notion of, oh, we're, we've got to bring these people in and, and uh, re you know, replace our own selves because we are evil as we are, and our culture is bad as it is, it needs to be replaced, uh, and, uh, you know, our, our traditions need to be totally, uh, uh, 
totally drained of, of vigor uh, and uh, hung out to dry, and we've got to all become just genderless gumbies, uh, as it were. Nothing like that was ever a part of the Soviet system. But right now in Russia, you know, Russia's seeing what's happening in the West, and it's not just Putin. It's 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 spoken of as if, oh, well, this is, you know, Putin is seizing upon these things, and he's making these speeches, you know, to uh, for cynical ends, cynical reasons. But it's not just Putin. This is uh, this is a uh, this is a widespread phenomenon in modern day Russia. This idea that Russia needs to needs to resist the destiny of the West. That Russia has its own destiny. That it's not going to go the way of the decadent West. So I'm going to end this uh, this um, video now. But uh, thanks for watching.